Hi everybody, it's Sandy. Welcome to my YouTube channel where today I will be Copic coloring a pumpkin patch. And I can't even believe that we're already doing Halloween cards. This is crazy. But I'm going to be using the brand new stamp set from Ellen Hudson designed by Julie Eversole and it's called Got Candy along with the mini windows dies that was released last year I believe it was and the little circle die is going to be perfect to create a moon for my scene. I have a bunch of things at the ready, a bunch of Copic markers and my airbrush and some ink as well as my craft assistant. I'll be talking more about how I'm going to use that big black metal craft assistant as we go. I have my Nina cardstock cut out with the die already and I'm going to leave the die intact. There's a little place at the bottom that you need to snip before it will actually act as a window. But I'm going to leave it for the moment so it stays nice and flat and stamp my pumpkins with some memento ink and I'm also going to make a couple masks for these pumpkins that I'll use in a couple of different ways throughout this project. There's two different pumpkins, the tall skinny one and the short squat one and I'll make some masks for the short squat ones as well and then add one more of them once I get the masks in place. So this is all ready to airbrush. Here's the spot where you need to snip that die so that it will act as a window and I'm going to gently tip it backward so that I can put some masking paper in between. It's more of that masking tape and then place it down onto the craft assistant. Now those little circles are all cut out of magnetic masking material and the idea is that you put these things onto your paper, the magnetic th stuff is supposed to hold in place and then you can airbrush and have those things masked out. Well unfortunately I found out that I think a science thing, maybe if you, some of you are scientists you can give me a more rational explanation, but I think there has to be critical mass for a magnet to work and those stars are a little too small. But the airbrush is the uh, that air gun that I'm showing you there is going to be used here to pop the marker into and place uh, some color here on the paper. I'm going to hold the airbrush way high up because my little circles keep blowing off because I think they are just too small to actually hold a magnetic charge. The moon that's on there, the, the large moon circle, stayed in place just perfectly. So I think it is just the, the size of those little circles that didn't work so well. But I already had wanted to do this kind of bubble look using the circles anyway. So I was going to be moving them in between each one uh, when I change colors. And so you can see I'm going to add the purple and it'll add another dimension as I overlay different circles on top of each other, different sizes, and kind of intertwine them in different ways and intertwine the colors. So I wanted kind of a bluish purple and some light colors around the moon itself. And then I'm going to add a little darker blue as it kind of gets away from the moon. And that will draw a lot of attention to the moon as I go. And you can see the colors are starting to build up here. With airbrush it helps to just layer colors little by little rather than trying to get a whole big solid, very dense color all at once. This craft assistant is fast becoming a replacement for me for my craft mat simply because it's for one easier to clean because it's just one flat surface there's not all the little wrinkles and since I keep my craft mat rolled up <laughs> and maybe I'm not supposed to do that I don't know I tend to set things near it or on top of it or things roll on it or whatever and it gets kind of wrinkled I have kind of wrinkles in mine and it doesn't stay really flat and it's really a bummer for me so I like this craft assistant even if I'm just doing inky techniques because it's very very flat and it's not it's just not gonna wrinkle at all and as I said cleanup is a breeze with it a little bit of Purell and it's all tidied up for your next use so I took all the circles off and then just started adding some of the dark blue just to unify that sky and make it a little bit more solid but still leave some of the layers of all these different colors and the bubbles and it made just a really fun kind of sky and I like cheerful happy kinds of Halloween cards not necessarily totally spookies so this worked out perfectly for me to create a really whimsical looking sky. So now I can move that masking 
tape and start to create a little bit of a moon. And what I've done is, is do a little bit of airbrushing around a few circles to create some light blue texture in the moon. And then after I finished that, I took one of the darker blues and just made a little bit of a shadow on one side of it, just to add a little bit more definition to it. There's a little bat in the stamp set, so I decided to stamp him off in the sky, flying away. And then I started to create the secondary piece that's going to add the other layer of the pumpkins to the pumpkin patch. So I'm using the same masks that I pulled off of the other piece, and I'll fussy cut them out, both the top and the bottom. And I'm doing that with some little scissors and just getting it all ready to go. I did put a piece of dimensional tape on the back so that I could kind of make sure I know where it's going to lay on here and then be able to appropriately do my shading on my pumpkins. So I'm just gonna color a couple of the pumpkins. You're not gonna to have to watch all of it, but I this is my favorite color, I think, color combination for pumpkins. A lot of people wonder what do you shadow it with and E19 or E09 are both really good shadow colors for nighttime pumpkins. If you're going to do daytime pumpkins then just use less of that color at the bottom but for nighttime ones you're going to need more of it because more of it will be in shadow. Now notice on this pumpkin on the right the highlight is facing the moon just like on the left the highlight is facing the moon so I'm going to get more shadow on one side than the other depending on what direction the light is coming down from the moon and then I'll just do all the ones in between. This little piece that's going to be in the front is going to just have shadows all the way along it and I can do all of it together you don't have to do each indip individual pumpkin separately if you don't want to and you can see there's going to be like a growing shadow it's going to get deeper as it gets off to the right but I'm also not going as far up the pumpkins with the dark color. There's more of the light, so it's going to look more like it's in front. I took my black marker and I just went around the very edges so that there wouldn't be a white highlight around where that was fussy cut out. And my, I didn't stamp my bat all that well, so I just darkened him up with the marker as well. I stamped a few of the little ghosties and fussy cut them out and stuck them inside the two layers of pumpkins and then I made a place to stamp my boo sentiment inside the moon. So when somebody lifts up that boo, they'll uh, get to see the sentiment. And they lift up the little moon, erased that line, added a little bit of Tombow stamp runner to the back to adhere it to the front of my card. My final step on this card is gonna to be to add some glossy accents on the bat and on the little ghosties. And I am using the regular bottle nib. I bought one of those replacement nibs that I saw lots of other folks talking about, and I have not found that it actually works for me. I can't even get it to stay on the bottle, so I had to throw that other one away and buy a new one. But it's okay because I love a brand new nib in a glossy accents bottle because it makes my card so pretty and shiny. And I think the ghosts look extra happy when they're shiny and ghost-like. Alrighty, so I am going to get going, but I'm going to leave you here with another couple of videos. One from this new release, the Poinsettias. That's a brand new one. The other one is from last year's release, and that one has some acorns in it, and I'll show you how to do some realistic coloring on them. Alright, you guys take care. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!